even though you can see that they're toy trains. If you're if you're involved enough in the characters and in the and in the, the, the progression of the of the story, you'll forgive you know rear screen projection. You'll forgive miniatures. You'll forgive all of that kind of thing. I find, and uh, I hope the audience will feel the same way. Uh, two of the characters, by the way, the, the two running this sort of amusing Greek chorus characters in this film, played by Basil Radford and Naunton Wayne, were created by Launder and, Gip and Gilead, were uh, greeted with such enthusiasm, especially by British audiences. They're playing two, two, two silly twits, two silly British fellows, that they became sort of minor stars and, and appeared in several subsequent films as the same characters, <laughs> uh, including Night Train to Munich and uh, some other stuff. Leonard, you bring up a wonderful point about Hitch's humor. These two actors were straight actors. They were not comics. They were very serious, straight actors. It was Hitch who put them together and made a comedy team. Out. Exactly. So. <laughs> Just so. Humor. Just so. Exactly so. Why do you think? Uh, what do you think is the appeal? You told me you, re you recently watched 39 Steps again, as did I. Uh, and I just fell in love with it all over again. What, what would you summarize as the qualities that make these British films so special and so endearing? There was a technical mastery. If you wanted to know how to shoot a film, look at the 39 Steps. I say to young people going to film school, forget it. Look at the 39 Steps. Every shot in it, every camera setup, every move in it is perfection. And you know, Hitch had a saying, camera logic. It should have camera logic. And I asked him one day, I said, what do you mean by camera logic? He said, the camera should be exactly where it should be to tell the story. And that's what he did and does to perfection, particularly in the 39 steps. You, every shot is perfection. You know, nowadays, if, let us say, we're going to shoot a big dramatic scene between Leonard and myself, <laughs> with the camera work that's taken hold, shall we say, the scene would start at the base of this <laughs> table. It would come up and it would dwell on the bottle. <laughs> then it would go over to the second bottle. <laughs> then it would pick up and might get a shot of you if you were lucky enough. <laughs> and eventually it would drift over to Leonard. And I'm still not in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> this is what a lot of camera work is today. It is not as it said the camera is exactly where it should be to tell the story. So, for example, when I was in Saboteur with him, he had a shot of me on the balcony around the torch. And he asked me, and this is all storytelling, because he believed the shot had to tell the story. Every close-up should move the story along. And I'm standing on this railing around the Torsen statue, and he quietly asked me, because I was much younger then, <laughs> would I do a backflip over the railing? <laughs> <laughs> Anything for all, Leonard. <laughs> so I said I would. And then he explained to me why he wanted that instead of having a double do it. And I did the backflip, by the way, onto mattresses that were built 16 feet high. And there was a grip there, I still remember his name, Scotty. And he caught me as I rolled. <laughs> the reason Hitch wanted me to do it a set myself was that he had the camera on me in a close shot. And he didn't want to cut. He wanted to go right with me as I went over that balcony. So that was storytelling. Mm -hmm. In other words, you just do that, you're on me, and then you cut away, 